Isaiah 58 reads, Shout out. Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways. As if there were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God, they ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. In the book of Acts, we see, and I've said like this, there's a difference in the church and the community or the ecclesia of in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the biblical um, in the book of Acts. Ecclesia is the movement, it's the body. The, the church is not a word that we find. Church is not a word that we find in New Testament Scripture. But something happened there in, in the book of Acts and to that body and what, sometimes we wonder what, what, what was the reason of it, what, is it, what transpired there, and what relevance does it have, and how does it speak to us today, and how does it hold us accountable today. And so we see right here in, in the um, second chapter of Acts, and this is what the, the ecclesia was doing right there at the, at the beginning, the body of Christ. Now I want to always distinguish that, because sometimes I'll slip up and say church, but I'm not going to... I'm tired of saying I can see it, so I'm going to say the body of Christ. They, the body of Christ, the young body of Christ, and how are they, how they become the body of Christ? By the falling of the Holy Spirit. Amen? They were lost. They didn't know anything. And so it's not like 12 guys, 11, because Judas has gone, sat around and go, you know, what's the next move? Because they were just, they were just humans. They couldn't figure it out. They were scared. They thought they were next. And so then all of a sudden, boom, the Holy Spirit falls on them. And, the, and if you'll read through Acts, it's always the Holy Spirit leading the way, guiding people, guiding the body into new expressions and um, building the body. Uh, it's always the Holy Spirit. So they're anointed, they're or, or set apart by the Holy Spirit. And so what do they go out and do? And in the second chapter, 42nd verse, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship and breaking of the bread and the prayers. Today we will break the bread because what are we? We are the body of Christ. Amen? We are following a tradition. We already, we've already said the Holy Spirit is here, right? So that one condition has already been met. Right? We're a holy body right now. We're the ecclesia. We stepped into this place. You have the Holy Spirit, you operate the Holy Spirit, but now we come in, and now we are the body of Christ come together. And so what are we here for? We're going to break bread, we're going to commune, we're going to pray for each other, and, and this has been going on for 2,000 years. And the pattern continues, and so we try and follow that. Could everybody acknowledge that the Holy Spirit's here today? Amen. Amen? We're moving, we're operating in the Holy Spirit right now. You realize that. Everything is, that we do is, is, is ordained and anointed. Like we're getting the rod up here and laying hands on it. Biblical. Not crazy. Biblical. Yeah. Alright, we down with that? <clears throat> don't, don't freak out when it happens because it's biblical. Because the book told us to do it. We, we have somebody suffering. That's what we're going to do. We believe when the young man spoke and blessed us that that was a gift from God. Amen. Amen. The biggest blessing today. I really shouldn't be saying anything right now. I should, should sit down and shut my mouth. Huh? You already had the sermon. You've already been blessed. So we're all, we'll admit that we're operating in the Holy Spirit. We know that He's, he's, he's here. We know that um, we're fixing to break bread. We're doing everything that they did. And then in 43, all came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. That's still happening today. Yeah. If it's not happening around you, move because it's happening somewhere. Amen? Yeah. That's, a, that's the thing about, about being a follower of Christ. If it's not happening where you're at, go find it. <coughs> because it's happening somewhere. God's on the move somewhere. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Well, we're just going to let that get passed right over, aren't we? Although y'all got real quiet right there. Amen? That's hard teaching right there, isn't it? It's in the book, though. 
Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food. And with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people, that's something we've got to work on right there, reconciliation amongst each other, the goodwill of the people. Amen? Let peace and harmony prevail. Amen? Amen. Say it, amen? Amen. All right, you're obligated now. <laughs> and having a good will of all people and day by day the Lord added to the numbers those who were being saved adding to the numbers what was going on they didn't have a church they didn't have a liturgy they didn't have a hymnal and you know what at one time a mega church was birthed right out of the one day 3,000 people moved into a relationship with Christ. 3,000 people. And people were added to the number every day. How did that happen? Why is it not happening now? Amen? Do you know what your job is? Do you know what the job of the Holy Spirit in Pentecost was? To proclaim. To proclaim. I'm standing here in this pulpit with this hot robe on and you assume that I'm the only one to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. No. That's not this book. I have limited exposure here. Right? I can proclaim all I want and nobody, those people out there, guess what? Newsflash. They can't hear me. <clears throat> only you can hear me. I'll assume that maybe probably everybody in here is saved. Might not be fully born again, but you're saved. So I don't expect if I give an altar call to just see a bunch of addicts and broken people rush down to the altar. The limited ability of us to do that work in here is just that, limited. Limited. Amen? We understand that? So what is... The purpose of the ecclesia, the body of Christ. It is to proclaim the good news. Jesus said, I'm here to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And then they said, repent too, right? Something we don't want to hear about very often in churches today. But he said, the kingdom of heaven is near, repent. And so if the kingdom of heaven is near and it's the church's mission to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ... Who has to do it? One person raise their hand. Okay. <laughs> this shouldn't be hard. This shouldn't be hard. Do you get it? The mission, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the falling of the Holy Spirit was for one person, one purpose, and one purpose only. To spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, to proclaim what has happened through Jesus Christ on the cross. That's the only thing it's here to do. Now, what does that mission type look like? It is to proclaim, it is to bring people into relationship, it is to tell people what was done on the cross. A guy was crucified, now he's, he's still crucified, but he, he rose. <clears throat> and to tell them the good news of that. But what is the mission of the church? First, to proclaim. But what does proclamation look like? I don't doubt, I, I'm very reluctant to stand on a street corner and, and slap a box. It's, it's just... It's just not me. I feel more comfortable in this road. So what if the mission of the ecclesia, of the body of Christ, is to proclaim the, the kingdom of heaven is near, what does that look like and how do we spread it? What's our, what's our mission? You're our, we've, if, in case you've missed it so far, who is, whose job is to proclaim? Uh, All right, okay, we got that. At least I've done something today. How do we do it? It's not always somebody standing on the corner with a Bible. I, I'll tell you one reason I didn't come into church earlier is because I, I, was, I was raised to be a contrarian. You know, I was just raised to be resistant, just argue and stuff. And so, I didn't like people, to, I still don't like people telling me what to do. I know, I, I can tell by the look on your face. Now, how's, that turn, how's that working out for you? Katie's <laughs> okay, falling. But I just don't like people, I just don't like people telling me. I don't like people 
jamming religion down my throat. I still to this day don't like people jamming certain doctrines down my throat. But what brings people into the ecclesia? Because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to bring them into the body of Christ. We're supposed to bring them into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And here's the good news. Most people, a large percentage, if you ask them who are followers of Jesus Christ, and you ask them how did you become one, it was never because someone just, you know, handed me a pamphlet with John 3.16 on it. You know, I saw a guy at the Super Bowl with fuzzy hair, and he had John 3.16. I looked it up immediately. I was saved. That just doesn't happen. <clears throat> Very seldom doesn't happen. I'm not saying it didn't happen. <coughs> but the large majority find somebody that they are close to and come into relationship with someone who knows Christ, who lives a good life in Christ, who is in the ecclesia, who knows a Christian and sees something in that person that they desire. Amen? And then they pursue it. I was, I was mentioned in during Sunday school, Mark Rich. Mark Rich, the, the Georgia coach, that's what he said. He was a young college quarterback. Saw somebody that had something that he didn't have. He was unfulfilled and therefore he asked him, he just asked the person, how come, how come you're, how come you're happy? How come you, you, you do life like you do? And the guy shared his story with him. Right? He was a follower of Jesus Christ. And we know that Mark Rick is a, has testimony probably quite a lot of people. So it's all about relationships. That's the number one mission. And that's the number one place where the church is really in good in mission and really makes, brings people into relationship. Is that you not isolate yourself and only hanging around Christians. Amen? It's going out and meeting and push yourself to do Now, if you're, if you're a recovering drug addict or alcoholic, I don't say go back into the streets and go right back down there. You ain't ready. Right? you got to be guarded up to go out there because they'll attack you. Right? Atheists are smarter than you are. Do you know that? Atheists know the Bible more than Christians do. I have found that because they want a, they want a good argument. You don't stand a chance against it. So don't go in there. If you're not equipped for that, don't go in there. But go into the places you are equipped. Amen? Where are you working? Just, just be a good friend. Just be a good person. Just pray for people. That's how the, that's how the gospel moved. That's how it went. There wasn't a lot of cultural changes. I know everybody talks about Jesus came to break down strongholds of like the, the Romans and stuff. There are societal structures that need to be changed, but I don't think that's where the good the good converts. That's not our basic mission. It's a it's a something we should not allow that. We should not tolerate certain things like that. But that's not totally our mission field. Our mission field is to engage, witness, and then offer. Amen. Lost and dying world, huh? Say it again. Engage, witness, and what? Offer. 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 You're in possession of something. Amen. The good news of Jesus Christ. You possess it. You know it. You're here listening to it. Get in your Bible. Get, nourish yourself. You have something. You're different. We have people who have joined this church this year. We have new Christians in here. Um, you know you're different now, don't you? You know you're different. You can never go back to the way you were. Because you've seen the light. You know what it's, you know what it's about. And you know, I'm, I'm not the same as I was last week. I'll tell you the truth. I'm not the same as I was at, at 8.30 this morning. All right? I, I've witnessed some things today that, that will ever change my life. I've received blessings today in this service. Hearing y'all sing that last stanza of that uh, just, just, just made no mind. You came for salvation, but you got more than that. You got a kingdom. You got a paradigm. You got a new world. You got a new life. You are different. You live different than other people. That's the proclamation. The way that you live is the proclamation that you carry out into the world. Amen? All right, everybody get that? Jerry? Yes, sir.
William Barclay. Um, I know that you know who that is, Carrie. Uh, said that others or people will know that we are Christians by the loveliness of our daily lives.
You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter into the kingdom of heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, to God. Before we close, I'd like to acknowledge that uh, <coughs> Joyce Mossinger is here with us. Um, the wife of Sven Mossinger, I know that uh, I speak of him often. So glad you came to worship with us today. Not a day goes by. Yeah, I think I saw
That is definitely God working. And I thank him for it. Amen. The benediction of the closing is this. Be the positive in someone's life. Amen? And even, even if you're not going along with that person, make that your, your, your mission for the week. I mean, anybody can be nice to somebody nice. Right? Seek them out. God will tell you. God will reveal to you. And let that be. That's, that's what I want you to leave with today. Reconcile and be, be somebody that brings the light of Christ and the message of the love of God through Christ. <coughs> Join your hands after.